Good morning everyone and today I have a pretty exciting video for you. I'm going to be showing you my uh, purist, um, it's a bit of a debate, customs from Zelda um, as you in Lego obviously. Um, um, as some of you may know, on Fridays I am running a custom Zelda showcase where I am showing off all of my custom sets that I make in studio and through drawing figures. However, a couple of months back I noticed some transfer blank transfer sheets. So I hopped into my digital figure designing program and I whipped up a couple of prints and we printed them out and got some nice decorated elements which you can see down here. And I'm going to take you on a close up journey as well as explain why I'm making this video now because something exciting is happening in January 2021 um, and I really hope it doesn't change between now and when the proper images are revealed but I'll get into that when I get to our third figure today so um, let's start out with some of the smaller pieces shall we so to start with I'm just going to bring this one up because it's fairly simple um, I had an extra sticker pack and I didn't think I was going to use it anytime soon, so I took the tile support and the blue tile and just printed a logo so that this shelf, which you can see down here, which resides in my minifigure frames, which I want to show you at a, a future opportunity, um, it, it looks like a nice display. Um, and then secondly up, we have a couple of different orbs and things. Oh no, what's happened to the that one? Um, so along the bottom here, we have the four champion uh, abilities. So like they appear down the side in Breath of the Wild. I'm going to pop them on the screen now. Um, so we have Rivali's Gale from Var Meadow, Mifa's Blessing from Varuta. Poor um, Abosa's Fury from Varnavoris has um, taken a bit of a toll there. and It looks like it hasn't stuck properly and it looks like Ruta... Might have the same problem there. Oh, well, I'm going to have to go back and fix those. Well, they've lasted a fair long time. And then, obviously, um, Daruk's protection from Var... Oh, it's gone blank. Varudania. Ah, oh, silly. Um, and then at the top, we have the three pearls from the Wind Waker. So we have Din, Feyre, and Nehru's pearl. Um, and I just put those on a Technic brick to try and stack them. I wanted to do more, but I didn't have enough of the, the shiny tiles. And also, they were really fiddly to apply, because as you can imagine, they're fairly small. Now, we're going to start by ignoring those figures, and I'm going to bring up to you his window pane, also from the extra sticker pack. I'm going to stick my hand behind it. This is going to be really hard to see, um, but it's actually the Gate of Time from Skyward Sword. So you can see the purpley outline, and we simplified it a bit. I don't know why, I just kind of have an obsession with using the gate of time, as you'll see in um, one of my Wave 1 showcases. You should check those out guys, they're, they're pretty cool. Um, and yeah, it just kind of looks like it's the gate, to time, gate of time, but that was more of a last minute addition to kind of fill out the space on the, the decal sheet. A couple of small ones, probably some of my favourites. Um, again, another really hard to see one. Um, this is actually that red Tin Man, of uh, the Tin Man minifigure from uh, um, Disney um, Lego Movie minifigure series. Came with a spare clockwork heart, which I erased the print from using an electric rubber. And I'm going to keep dropping it here. But then we printed these fine lines on it to represent a heart container and I think you can pretty much see that there. So that's just a nice little simple accessory from the game. I need to make one of those on my showcase. But and next up we have the weirdest chew you're ever going to see. Um, this is just a Technic ball end with a couple of eyes printed on and let me tell you printing onto curved surfaces is not easy. Looks better in the camera than it does in real life. There's a lot of Tipex which we use as a filler behind um, the more transparent colours, like red on red, um, to make them actually stand out and not appear too pale. So, put a couple of chew eyes. So we have a fire chew from Breath of the Wild. Um, and then, just over here, I just put a random chest in that I wasn't going to use. And the hero shield from Wind Waker, because I was playing Wind Waker at the time. And I had a spare shield, and I was like, I want a shield on there. So this is the wrong shape, but it's on there, it's stuck, it's a nice print to have. And I don't think LEGO would make a new mould for it, so that's that. Um, and then let's start with our main protagonist, figure-wise. So, all of these figures 
were going to be based off Skyward Sword, but no, nah, this one, um, the Zelda is based off Breath of the Wild in the end. Um, so, when I say purist, I mean... Now, well, my definition of purist is weird. I won't use third-party elements. The only third-party applications I condone are reproduction stickers. Um, and in very sparring cases, so for these guys which are going to sit in a frame, not be used in a city, and are really just temporary holdovers until we get sets, um, custom-made stickers uh, for figures and things. However, no moulding, third-party, I'm a very purist in that re regard. Um, I've been meaning to get rid of the very few off-brand sets that I have from Wilco, I believe, but they are very separated. I have a whole bin of like the nano stuff as well. But we're just using some dark tan pieces here. The best elf piece is this piece here. And I, again, I'm going to talk about why they're yellow tones in a minute. Got the Hylian shield over here. And just a golden sword that I had lying around from the initial Zelda I did. Um, this is a one figure where I attempted belt printing. I didn't put any tipex on the belt, so it did not work as well. And as you can see, I had to scratch off a lot of tipex because we had a tipex explosion. I wish I'd filmed it, to be honest. I'm just using a standard smiley face, and I printed some torso work on there. No arms, I was too scared. Um, and that's pretty much my, my custom link. Um... Let's go to Zelda next, and initially she was basically just the elf princess from series 17 of the collectible minifigures on screen now. But then we did some update work, had one of these blue, um, blue dress pieces hanging around, it was just a slope from, that I had. Um, and I had one of these blue torsos, um, which I removed any print from. I then tipexed it all up in two pieces and I printed the royal outfit, not the research outfit from Breath of the Wild. I love this outfit, it's pr pretty nice. Um, only front printing and I wish it was the new dress piece but I haven't been able to get a hold of one yet. Um, and I also did a Sheikah slate on a black 1x2 because I think black works better for it as a colour. Uh, using that elf maiden hair, and that's where the gold sword came from, from series 17, and then just a generic face as well. I think this one's my favourite, just because how consistent it is, and also there's the least tipex showing. However, I think after what happens in January, uh, the next one's going to be my favourite. So let's take a look at Girahim, and then I'm going to explain. Okay, so here we have my custom Girahim, and he's using the male slick back hair, which this one in particular came from Grindelwald, from Grindelwald's Escape. Um, just using a red cape, I may turn that into the poncho at some point, but for now it's just like this. Uh, torso and leg printing. There's a couple of colour uh, discrepancies, but it came out alright. I did not realise that the grey was actually his skin. Uh, just a black katana sword and then a custom face print, which is unique to him. Um, and that's pretty much it for this figure. But I want to talk about the hair, because the hair I chose, and you will have seen if you've watched my... Uh, Legend of Zelda, uh, Lego Legend of Zelda custom fire sanctuary project is that I use the um, hair that goes long on one side, which I don't believe has a name, but it's been used as lettuce in the Chinese New Year sets. And very excitingly, I've been waiting for this thing to come in white for about a year now. And thanks to the beautiful preliminary image, which I am going to not show you, but I'm going to do a mock up, this piece is coming in white in a city set in January 2021 and I'm very excited because he's not the only figure that's going to receive some updates. So if we take another look at Link for a second I want to show you what has just become available for him and it's on screen now. The elf hair piece has finally for the first time come with a flesh toned ear. And that is super exciting, it was in the Friends Advent Calendar, because it means that I actually have capability to change all the headpieces to tan. Um, not tan, sorry, um, flesh tones. And the, the one drawback here is Zelda, because there are no particular hair pieces which I love, especially considering if I'm going to change it to flesh, then I want to go blonde. The only suitable piece is the Legolas piece. So if anyone knows anything about any possible alternate hair pieces for her, or whether I should just leave it alone, because ideally I'd use the Sally hair piece in blonde, but that one does not exist yet either. Um, but 
uh, I don't know how um, sold I am on the Legolas hairpiece. But anyway, let me know what you guys would think about that in the comments. But um, yeah, I just thought it was about time that I show you all of the actual customs I have in real life, as well as question the meaning of purist. Um, but mostly, I'm just excited to get a new hairpiece for you. I've been waiting for a long time. Um, as well as pick up that um, earpiece for Link. As well as possibly those double molded legs from the uh, Ideas Fossil set. Because those would be perfect as well. On screen now. Um, and I'm just excited to see them become closer to my real designs. Um, in 2021. And that was exciting enough for me to share. So I hope everyone has a great day. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.